The first step in upholstering the ottoman's lid is to cut a piece of 2 inch foam to the exact size of the lid. I use a disposable razor knife with the blade fully extended and I use a sawing motion to get through the thick foam. You could use a sharp kitchen knife just as well. Now using a straight edge and a tape measure, I mark the position of the eight buttons that will tuft the top of the ottoman. I set up the straight edge about four inches from the long end, and then I mark about oh, four and five eighths of an inch in from the uh, short ends. I then equally divide the space between the outer sets of buttons to mark the four inner buttons. Now using a one and a quarter inch hole saw in my cordless electric drill, I make a hole located at each of the button locations. This will allow the buttons to pull down into the top of the fabric to create that nice tufted look. Next, I cover the buttons with the same fabric I use for the upholstery using a handy dandy button covering kit I bought at my local fabric store. After cutting a circle of fabric to the correct size, I then carefully press it into a rubberized plastic form that comes with the kit. Good side down, I first press it into the form with my finger, then I set the outer button in place and press it down using a scrap dowel. Once the button cover clicks into the form, I use my fingers to gather the material into the back of the button. Now I set the eyelided back half of the button over the assembly and center it, press it down. Now I add the plunger that comes with the kit and press it real hard with my thumbs until it clicks into place. Now you simply pop the button out of the form and it's ready to go. Now with the top surface of the lid facing up, I mark the position of the buttons just the same as I did on the foam earlier. In order to be able to attach the buttons to the top of the lid, I have to secure them via U-shaped fence staples, which I drive one at each button location. The U part has to face towards the long edges of the plywood. I use a heavy duty waxed nylon thread to secure the buttons. First I cut a piece about a foot long, then I thread it through the button's eyelet on the back, center it on the thread, and then tie it off with a knot so the thread won't slip either way. Now this is a cool little trick I'm going to use here. I basically test thread both ends uh, through one of my fence staple loops and now I'm going to take a spacer block that's one inch thick and this is about how high I want the button to sit when it's uh, finally attached. Now I'm going to stretch the thread and I'm going to mark where the edge of the plywood is. This will allow me to pull the button down just to the correct amount later on. I then repeat the process with the other seven buttons. Next, I set my two inch thick foam atop the lid, make sure it's centered on the U-hooks. Now I set my one inch thick poly upholstery batting on top and cut an oversized piece. I let it overlap a couple of inches, not really worrying about exactly where I'm cutting at this point. In order to keep the poly batting in place on the foam, I'm going to spray it with Super 77 uh, spray adhesive made by 3M. You can spray both the uh, poly batting and the top of the foam if you wish. Once you stick it down, it's hard to move, so be careful and try not to get any wrinkles uh, in the poly batting. 
Once you've got it where you want it, press it down. And now I'm going to trim the excess from the edges, leaving somewhere between an inch and an inch and a half all the way around. I'm also going to cut a small diagonal piece off of each corner. Now at each location where there's a hole in the thick foam, I'm going to cut a cross-shaped uh, sort of slot. This will allow the poly batting to also pull down uh, when the buttons are pulled down tight uh, later on. Now I'm going to measure and see how big a, a piece I'm going to need for my um, black vinyl upholstery fabric. Um, it's not crucial here. Um, I think I cut a, I'm going to cut a piece that's about 42 by 24. Uh, the only thing is to make sure and leave plenty of extra fabric. Uh, you're going to trim off the excess later. I just use a regular straight edge and a razor blade to cut the vinyl. Um, you can use a sharp pair of scissors uh, just as well. Even though you can't see it here, the black vinyl upholstery fabric I've chosen has a nice textured surface that makes it look quite a bit like leather. Now I center my lid atop the uh, good surface of the vinyl. I make sure it's centered all the way around. Now I'm going to take some uh, blue masking tape and I'm going to set two pieces, one at each end of the lid flush with the edge and now with a marker pen I'm gonna mark each of the corners after removing the lid I'll use my tape measure to make a mark that is four inches in from each of the uh, corners I've marked this is going to allow me to line up my straight edge to uh, to get the uh, hole positions in the top. Now on this straight edge I've put pieces of tape and I've marked the exact position of each of the holes I need for my buttons. And I'm using a uh, eighth inch hole punch here to make a hole at each location. Now here I've already placed one threaded button through each of the holes I just made in the vinyl. And I'm ready to start attaching the vinyl to our lid. Um, the first step is going to be to feed the, uh, the two threads through the hole and through the uh, fence staple. Now I'm going to carefully pull the thread down tight and I'm looking for those two marks on the thread that I made earlier with the marker pen. I'm going to get those right to the edge of the ply and then I'm going to staple the thread in place to hold the button down couple of taps with a hammer to secure that staple and now I repeat the same process on each of the other buttons. Once I'm done with one side I flip the entire lid around and do the other side just the same. The result you want is to get eight buttons pulled down nice and evenly. Once they're there you want to secure each of the threads by uh, pulling it over and securing it with a second staple which is also hammered down for security. You can cut the extra off and repeat the process. Now to stretch the vinyl around the edge of the lid I start in the middle of a long side I make sure that the creases are nice and even and when I like what I see I drive a couple of staples there and I move to the next space between two of the buttons and repeat the process. You don't need to add a lot of staples at this point, just enough to, uh, to make sure that the vinyl is pulling down nice and evenly. Once I've done that, I move to the locations directly adjacent to the buttons and I keep pulling it down. Also on the ends, same thing. I'm looking for nice even folds and about the same amount of uh, curvature on the outer edge of the thick foam. Oh, that one didn't work. <laughs> there. And I always use my hammer to uh, secure the uh, staples. 
Now the corner. I chose to do a folded style corner on my bench lid. Uh, so that starts with a single staple with the fabric kind of pulled pulled down evenly around the one side. Now I'm going to essentially create another staple there uh, on the other side of the corner and uh, there's a sort of wedge of fabric that's going to be trapped underneath. Well, um, that would create a little bit too much thickness around the edge of the lid, so I'm going to cut away a uh, triangular piece of excess material uh, right in the middle of the folded portion here. And you'll see I'll, I'll fold the, uh, the leftover around and I'll tuck it down, pull it down and tweak the corner until it's looking about right can pinch it or pull it as you need to. Um, once it's good, pull it down and drive a staple to hold it in place. And then continue stapling around the corner to, uh, to secure it. Repeat this process in the other three corners and you'll be ready to fill in the staples between the uh, the ones that you did earlier. This allows you to adjust a little bit uh, if the fabric isn't pulled down quite right. And once uh, you've stapled all the way around, uh, use your hammer to uh, make everything nice and flat and flush so the trim will go in place nicely. Now I'm going to trim off the excess vinyl around the entire edge of the lid just using a sharp razor blade. Easy peasy. The final step to finishing the lid is to add the L-profile trim pieces that fit all the way around the edge. Having cut them to rough length, I first temporarily clamp the two shorter end pieces uh, to the lid, securing them with some long bar clamps. Now, on one of the long trim pieces, I've already mitered one end. I set that flush to the end on one side and then holding it in place I then mark it using the short trim piece to show me exactly where the length needs to be. I take this to the miter saw and cut it and repeat the process with all four pieces. Before finally attaching them I add a little bit of glue to each corner and keep the pieces from falling I tack them in place with a little bit of blue masking tape. Now I replace the clamps so that all four trim pieces are nice and tight against the uh, vinyl at the edge of the plywood. I check the corners carefully and make sure everything's in place. And now I use my pneumatic nail gun which drives these lovely little headless brads which are hard to see. And I work my way all the way around the lid and drive them to hold them in place. Now all that remains is to set the lid into the ottoman, fits beautifully, and uh, with our handy little sliding lift mechanism at the end, can lift the top up to have full access to storage inside the ottoman's base, or you can flip the top over, cushion side down, press it down into place, and now you have a nice solid top coffee table.